Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dylan and I'm a cycling coach at Carmichael Training Systems. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to get fast if you have limited time to train. If you're the kind of rider who struggles to get in hours on the bike due to work, family obligations, or whatever it may be, then stick around because this video is for you. This isn't gonna be a time management video. Instead, I'll be going over a week's worth of training to show you exactly what you need to do to maximize every minute that you're spending on the bike if you've got less than 10 hours a week to train. Now, if you have significantly less than 10 hours a week to train, like only five or six, I'll show you where you can take out time. And if you've got more than 10 hours a week to train, I'll show you where you can add time to maximize your training. If you're new to this channel, I make weekly training topic videos going over tips and tricks that I've learned in my 12 years of racing experience that have gotten me to the top of the ultra endurance mountain bike game in the US and as a coach at CTS. I also go into the science on your training questions, so if you want to learn how to get faster or just more about sports science in general, be sure to subscribe. And if you have a training question, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll either answer it down there or do some more research and make a whole video about it. At CTS, we coach all levels from pros to people who have just started riding, but the vast majority of our athletes are time crunch riders with jobs, families, and other responsibilities. So we've got a ton of practice coaching this type of athlete and finding out what works and what doesn't work. Just because you have responsibilities outside of cycling doesn't mean you can't get extremely fit with the time you do have if you know what you're doing. Let's get into what your training week should look like if you have less than 10 hours a week to train. First things first, for this video, I'll be using an online training tool called Training Peaks. Training Peaks is essentially a calendar where you can upload your ride data and also plan out your training plan. If you don't use Training Peaks, you definitely should consider it because it's got a lot of cool features that go beyond just using Strava. Let's start off with what your training should look like during your lifting phase, and then we'll move into what your training should look like as you get closer to racing and all your workouts are done on your bike. Now, if you're not lifting in the off season, then you're not maximizing your potential. And if you wanna see why, then I made a whole video about it that I'll leave in the description below. Your weightlifting phase should last around two months following a short break after your last race of the season. And then you should transition to focus on the bike training four to five months before your first important race. We wanna start by adding our weightlifting days first since that's the main focus of this block. You wanna have two lifting sessions per week with ample recovery time between so don't have your lifting days back to back and two or three days between is preferable. I like to do a Tuesday and Friday lifting day because it's easy to make Monday a rest day after the weekend and make Thursday a rest day before Friday's workout. And we wanna schedule lifting sessions after a rest day so we are as fresh as possible for the lift. Once we have those in, we can add in our riding. The riding we're doing during this phase should be pretty low intensity around zone two or below. We're getting our intensity from the lifting we're doing and if you're doing your lifting correctly, you shouldn't really want to go much over zone two when you're riding because your legs will be so sore. We'll schedule an hour endurance on Wednesday and six hours split between Saturday and Sunday when most of us have more time to ride and nothing on Monday and Thursday. Just use those days to recover. If your schedule is different and you work on the weekends, then obviously you can modify this, but try to keep the same pattern of two or three day blocks with rest days in between and make sure that you schedule your lifting day after the rest day so that you can be fresh for your lift. So if the average gym session is an hour, that gives us three hours during the week and six hours during the weekend, giving us nine hours total for this week. If you've got less time than this during the week, then take it out of your rides, preferably on those longer weekend rides and keep your gym sessions. Your gym sessions are the most important right now and your riding will pick back up as we get closer to the race season. If you've got more time than this during the week, then I'd suggest adding in an easy ride on your lifting days. If you can do it after your lifting session, that works great for clearing out your legs after a hard lift. Now, when you transition to focus on the bike training after your weightlifting phase, you're gonna wanna have a recovery week with easier and shorter rides to rid your body of fatigue before you load it back up again. At the end of the rest week, you're gonna wanna perform a threshold power test, or if you don't have a power meter, then a threshold heart rate test. Now, if you don't know what your FTP is or even what FTP is in general, then be sure to check out my video on five ways to test your FTP. I'll leave the link in the description below. Once you have your FTP, you're ready to plan out your training week. In our weightlifting phase, we alternated between a Tuesday, Wednesday block and a Friday, Saturday, Sunday block. But after that, I like to shift to a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday block, and then a Saturday, Sunday block with Monday and Friday being used as rest days. 
This is because we can use the three day block to do shorter, more intense rides during the week when we have less time and then do longer, lower intensity riding on the weekend when we have more time. Now, obviously you can shift this if your schedule is different, but try to keep the same pattern. I always start with putting in the intensity for the week first. And just like with lifting, we want the intervals that we're doing to be done after a rest day so that we're fresh and we can get the most out of them. The types of intervals you're doing is gonna depend on what kind of races you're training for and how far along in your training you are. In general, your intensity is gonna increase as you get closer to your more important races and your intervals are gonna get more specific to the demands of that race. So usually what I'll do is put a really hard interval session on Tuesday and a few hard intervals at the start of a longer ride on Saturday. Saturday's interval session won't be quite as taxing as Tuesday's because you'll have more riding to do after and you'll have a long ride to do the next day on Sunday. Once we have that, I may put in some lower intensity intervals on Wednesday. If you're stacking interval days back to back, then you want the more intense intervals to be done on the first day because high intensity intervals require you to be fresh in order to maximize what you get out of them. Then Thursday is usually just a shorter endurance ride and Sunday is a longer endurance ride. Don't try to do any sort of intervals or intensity on these days. If you do, you'll probably be too tired and you won't be able to maximize the workout. What's the problem with this? Well, if you continue to do this, then your workouts will all become a moderate intensity instead of really hard when they need to be. For example, if you do intervals on Thursday after you already did intervals on Tuesday and Wednesday, well, first of all, those intervals aren't gonna be very high quality. And then when you go to do intervals on Saturday, you're gonna be too tired and those intervals won't be high quality either. Pretty soon, all your workouts are at a moderate intensity and you won't be getting as fit as you could be. A study on the impact of training intensity distribution on performance in endurance athletes took 12 endurance runners and put them into a group that emphasized low intensity and one that did moderate intensity. The low intensity group made greater performance gains and the study concluded that these findings provide evidence supporting the value of low intensity training as long as the contribution of high intensity work remains sufficient. This might seem counterintuitive if you're the kind of rider who rides as hard as you can every time you get on the bike, but if you truly want to maximize those hard days when it really matters, then you're going to need to be well rested. And if you don't have easy days built into your schedule, then you won't be able to do that. So if we do an hour of intervals on Tuesday, either ride endurance or do lower intensity intervals for an hour and a half on Wednesday, and then do an hour and a half endurance on Thursday, that gives us four hours. The remaining six hours can be split between Saturday and Sunday when you have more time to ride and that gives us 10 hours. If you have less time than this, then I'd say shave 30 minutes off of your ride on Wednesday and Thursday and an hour to two hours off of one of your weekend rides, but keep one of those weekend rides long because there's some benefits that you get from a long ride that you don't get from a shorter ride. This is why I say if you wanna add more time onto your week, then add it onto one of your weekend rides and make that ride really long. Sunday works great for this. If you can get in four to five hours on Sunday, there's some adaptations that are made during a longer ride like that that you don't make during a shorter ride. For example, long rides can teach your body to use fat as a fuel source instead of carbohydrates. Now you may have noticed that I didn't include any recovery rides in the week, and that's because for a time crunch cyclist, it's more effective to use that time on another day. Recovery rides won't help you get fitter, they just aid with your recovery. So if you're limited on time, I recommend skipping them and using that time to get work done so that you can ride longer on another day. If you end up doing a recovery ride, it has to be super easy. Most people mess this up. If you wanna learn how to properly do a recovery ride, I have a whole video about it and I'll leave a link in the description below. So that's how to get fast with less than 10 hours a week. To review, you wanna put your most intense workouts, whether that be lifting or intervals, after the rest day so that you're fresh for them. If you're stacking interval days on top of each other, then you want the less intense intervals to be done on the second day. Rotate between a high intensity, low duration block during the week when you have less time to train and a low intensity, high duration block during the weekend when you have more time. And if you have time, get in at least one long ride during the week to tap into some adaptations that you don't get from shorter rides. If you guys are interested in learning more about how to train with limited time, I highly recommend this book, The Time Crunch Cyclist by Chris Carmichael. He goes into a lot more detail than I was able to go into in this video, and I'll leave the link for the book in the description below if you're interested. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this information helpful. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more training tips. 
If you wanna see more coaching content, then follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you wanna follow my training leading into this upcoming season, be sure to check me out on Strava. Finally, if you're looking for a coach, shoot me an email at djohnson at trainwright.com.